So this is a very handsome design here. I don't ever look at these. Are these renderings? Yes. <laughs> these are renderings. These look real. So the next thing I want to look at is actually Christopher's portfolio. And it's pretty good. It's pretty damn good actually, but I think there are ways to improve it. And as Christopher already mentioned, like your skill set is around building things mm -hmm. and sketching. Yeah. And I, th I think that shows through in the portfolio, but the harsh reality of portfolios is that, you know, the ones that look the coolest and have like the flashiest renderings and sketches actually, and like the best, like nicest clean layout and like really highlight certain aspects of the design compositionally tend to get more attention. And that's not fair, but that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. So even though Christopher is like a really great designer, he might not get as much attention as other people who have like the cool flashy renderings. Now, one thing I wanna make really clear is that the cool flashy renderings and the crazy sketches are gonna get the attention of the hiring manager pretty quickly, but if they look into it more deeply and they actually take the time to look through the projects, they might realize like, oh wait, this actually, this this kid's work is not very good. It's just sort of like that first sort of read. So that's why it's really important to get it right. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So if we look at this and let's see here. So we have a cover page. I'm gonna actually look at this as if I was a hiring manager. So this is the speed at which I would look at it. All right, we got, I would look at the sketches for a little bit longer and the models, cause these are actually really good. Um, all right, okay. So that's pretty much the speed I would look at this if uh, I was actually going through like 50 portfolios. You have to think about this from the perspective of a hiring manager. They might have like 50 or 100 of these piled up. Mm -hmm. um, they might be getting like 10 or 15 emails per week minimum, like asking for a job basically. So you have to understand that, you know, there's just a lot for them to go through and cover. All right, so let's go to the beginning and actually look at okay. this in depth. So the cover page, I think it's, it's okay. What is this supposed to be like this crackling effect? Yeah, so I chose this background just as something a lot more interesting than just black and white in the portfolio. Um, and even though black and white's pretty clean, just wanted to have something of visual interest um, and something to bookend the, the beginning and the end of the portfolio. Okay, yeah, I don't know. I think it's kind of interesting. Like it does sort of intrigue me a little bit, but I'm not quite sure what it is. Mm -hmm. And because, and also like there are aspects of it that look a little bit fake like uh, like sort of photoshoppy, mm -hmm. like these are these look to be like gradients or something. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I think it actually detracts from the work a little bit. Okay. Um, I don't know, what, what do you guys think? L leave a comment, but don't be mean. I'll delete <laughs> mean comments about Christopher. I, I won't delete, me, delete mean comments <laughs> about me, but I will delete mean comments about Christopher. Tell me what you guys think about this cover page. Um, if we look at this, we have experience. I don't ever look at these personally, mm -hmm. but I have heard that people do. So for whatever that's worth, I mean, we can leave that in. If you guys are still watching at this point, you should totally subscribe. It helps the channel out. It will encourage me to make more content like this, and I would really appreciate it. You can always unsubscribe later if you change your mind. This is interesting, but I think that these images blend together a little bit too much. They're just a little bit too cropped to okay. know like what's going on in them. Like they're just a bit too cropped. So if you could think of these compositionally a little bit differently, I think that'll help. So more specifically, you could either pull them back just a little bit, right. or you could also leave some more space in between each of them. Or you could uh, make them not so narrow and mm -hmm. a little bit taller so it's easier to see what's going on. There's like a lot of different ways to handle it, but you know, it's up to you. Cool. Oh, also this, much too close. Got it. These things don't really register on a conscious level with a hiring manager, especially considering how short they're going to be spending mm -hmm. looking at your portfolio, but it's still really, really important because it, it'll register subconsciously. So this is a very handsome design here. I also don't know that you need to write Christopher Negretti at the corner. It's like actually a pretty dominant piece of this composition. It's actually higher contrast than ambient light microscope. Right. So I don't know if you need to go like too crazy with it. Okay, so if we look at the first project, like I said, there's um, this is commanding a lot of attention. I don't yep. know that it needs to. I think that this should probably be the third read. So mm -hmm. this should be the first read. This is the second one and this is the third. 
um, if we continue on, these sketches are really good. Uh, they're pretty well executed, although, like you said, a bit unorthodox compared to traditional industrial design sketching, which is fine. Mm -hmm. I don't quite understand what's happening with these. If you can show me the visual link sure. between the sketches on the left and how you ended up with the sketches on the right, it would really help. And one way to do that might be to show them as like, and like uh, the sketches on the left overlaid onto the sketches on the right. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of see like, oh, this is where the inspiration is coming from. Absolutely. You don't need to do it for all of them, but maybe just one or two, just so it's really obvious what's happening. Sure. Nobody's going to read like inspired by structural trusses of towers. Just show me a picture of a truss and tower and just okay. and say that. If we go to the next page, page six, we can see more good sketches of some details, really interesting renderings. Um, yeah, these are good sketches. This is really cool. I like this page because it's so it shows like a wide breadth of exploration here. This is really well executed and the photography is well done as well. Like if we go to the next page, page eight, re refined prototypes. Yeah, this is great. This is um, really nice scale model building. People will like to see this a lot. Trust anatomy. I don't know if you need to include, I don't know. I, th I feel like this should be like a really, really high impact rendering mm -hmm. more than like this sort of illustrator image okay. because it's just higher impact visually. Yeah, yeah. So that's page nine. And then if we go to page 10, these are some really nice features and details. Did you actually make this? Yes, yeah, it's a, it's a uh, one to one scale model that actually works too. Do you still have it? Of course. Yep. Okay, so take more pictures of this, okay. like in context. The fact that you have such a nice model shows a couple things. Number one, it shows that you understand proportions and building and fabricating, and you can show people using it in context, which is really powerful mm -hmm. because it shows you the benefits of it immediately. Is this, are these renderings or photos? Those are photographs. Oh, these are great. So if we look at page 11, these are all photographs, really, really beautiful work. I think that the design itself is very like it's pretty dramatic um who is this for um so it's a it's an ambient light microscope so that means that it uses a light pipe and it can be used outdoors so i aimed it towards um like an enthusiast or novice wanting to get into using microscopes maybe looking at um, pond water samples taking it out just essentially cutting the cord um but also like the elements of the design were simplified um, and unified through that central truss um, so all of the controls are really simple to use. There's no electronics to be found on it. Um, and it's got a self-leveling base so that you can put it on like an uneven picnic table um, if you're taking it to the park or something or a pond. Okay, so yeah. show all of these things because yeah. you have the model. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, these are great images on page 11, but like they all basically show very, very similar things. You could almost just have one or maybe two of these Mm -hmm. um, and it would basically be the same thing. Show us all the other cool features that you put into this so that we can see Definitely. all that really clever thinking. And especially because you have a model, you don't have to do like a bunch of obnoxious, annoying, like uh, compositing in Photoshop, which mm -hmm. is super awesome. If we go to the next project, Mezcla, this was actually for my class, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. All right, so ID2. this was ID2, this was sophomore year. Yep. Um, this is actually a nice rendering. It sort of piques my interest. I'm not quite sure what it is. However, I think that this design feels, and I think I mentioned this to you last time, mm -hmm. it feels very mechanical. Yeah. Um, it doesn't feel like a home, like hand mixer product. This actually feels like a little bit more of a welcoming design, the one that you have on the second page on page 13, but that's not your design, so that's not good. So I think that once again, the sketches are awesome, really good sketches. These explorations are really interesting as well that kind of show how you're thinking about it mm -hmm. in the hand. That's really good. So it shows me that you have an understanding of ergonomics. These uh, mixers were actually cast. So if you have any images of it being cast, I think that's really helpful. Yeah, However, for the final like model shots, because there's like some, um, what's the word I'm looking like for? Pitting. Pitting. Yeah. pitting. yeah, there's some pitting on page 16. Um, it's like cool for a prototype, but I wouldn't use it for final model photos. Mm -hmm. Um, the beater design is really clever and interesting. See if you can express the the beater design visually, like okay. what the benefit of it, and that's really hard. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be a tough one to do. Basically, 
see if you can show like, okay, this is a normal beater design and there's a bunch of stuff stuck in it. And yeah. then this is mine and it just like sort of comes off. And that might have to be done in a video also, like on your website or whatever, but for the PDF, just show an image side by side. Okay. That's like a uh, quick little pro tip here. If you want to show comparison between two things, show them side by side next to each other on the same page and preferably label one like good or bad or before or after or, you know, existing beater design, new beater design, whatever. Uh, features and benefits. So like, once again, this would be super cool as a rendering. Mm -hmm. It's cool that you have this. It's just like, it doesn't have the visual impact that's so important. Right. And then, okay, these are actually pretty good shots. They're, they're not amazing, they're fine. But I think that the design itself could use some work. So more Definitely. specifically, like I think that the color palette that you've chosen is pretty good. Um, the finish that you have is, I know it's like from a rattle can or a spray mm -hmm. gun, but it looks a little bit too industrial. Like the texture on it is just needs to be a little bit more fine in order mm -hmm. for it to feel more luxury and accessible and sort of home goodsy. Yeah. Also, I think that it feels a little bit too much like an extrusion. So what I mean by that, like the handle feels like, you know, an outline and then you just extruded it or lofted it. And then you actually connected it pretty elegantly, the handle to the main body pretty well. But I don't know, I, I think it just needs a little bit of work. Like these um, little grill marks are maybe just a tiny bit too big and the mm -hmm. way that they're arranged is very like linear. So that makes it feel quite, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Quite industrial. Yeah. So like it's close, but if you want to show anything in your portfolio, it's got to be like 100% like there. Like it's got to be awesome. Yeah. And if we look at some of these images on the left on page 18, you'll notice that like it shows how the beaters actually sort of assemble and how everything fits together. And now I understand the purpose of that notch. Mm -hmm. I understand what that notch is there for. It's to hold the cable. Try to be a little bit more explicit in the way that these things are being expressed, whether Definitely. that's through giving it like its own image, like its own page to breathe, mm -hmm. or um, like actually showing it more explicitly. Sometimes one thing that really helps is to just put a little bit of text. I know I said that nobody reads, but think of it like a billboard. So yeah. like, if you look at any like Apple iPhone billboard, let's say, if you look at an Apple iPhone billboard, it's basically like one caption mm -hmm. and it expresses what it does visually very quickly. Because you know, if you're driving on the highway or something, you don't have time to process anything. Yeah. So for example, um, one thing that you'll see a lot is, you know, a, a beautiful picture. And then the only caption is shot on iPhone. So mm -hmm. another way to put it is like, you're selling the, the sizzle, not the steak. That's a yeah. very common sales and marketing <laughs> term. Another one that you'll see is like the Apple iPhone when they made one that was water resistant, they just show it with water all over it. Mm -hmm. And it just says new iPhone 12. I don't even think they say that it's water resistant. I could be wrong. But those are the sorts of things. That's sort of how you should be presenting the work in your portfolio. Every single image is like very clear, easy to understand in one split second. And you can understand right away what's happening. And this is not an easy thing to do. Believe me, it is not easy, but it's worth it. Absolutely. This makes a lot of sense. And you know, the hand mixers are just such a weird product. Um, I, I really struggled with this project despite enjoying the process of putting it together. It's just a really, really weird, weird thing to redesign or, or um, you know, find a, find a user for, I think. I understand. Yeah. So it's, it's a weird a, shape. Yeah, it is. It's a weird shape. It's pretty much determined, uh, like the shape is all dictated by the internals and yep. how it works. So, well, look, I think that, <laughs> I think that like the ideas that you have in here are really good. They just need a little bit of refinement and mm -hmm. massaging in terms of like these small details. Yeah. yeah. Like, Unfortunately, like it or not, industrial design is a very visually driven field. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, on an intellectual level, we all prioritize functionality because that's the right thing to do for the customer. Yeah. But we like shit that looks cool. That's so right. that's just how it is. <laughs> um, and your that's stuff needs to look like super, super cool. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not fair that it's like that because that's not how you're going to be judged in your job necessarily. But that's just how portfolio reviews are, mm. unfortunately. Okay, so roll top backpack. This image lacks visual impact. Like it's cool that you made a thing and it's it it's awesome that you actually made the bag. Mm -hmm. But like this image, it's very dark. Yeah. Uh, the area of highest contrast is 
kind of just like your overall silhouette and body and your backpack sort of blends into the rest of it. Okay, trains, whatever, cool, nice sketches. These sketches are good. Mm -hmm. These sketches on the left are actually really cool. I wonder, it looks like you scan them in from a page. I wonder if you could sort of just line them up so they feel a little bit more regimented. Okay. Like, it looks like you scanned in each page and just sort of yeah, arrange yeah. them. Like, arrange each individual one so it's in a nice clean row. Okay. Also, you don't need to put your signature in these in these sketches here. Yeah, yeah. I know it was probably scanned in, but just mm. something to keep in mind. That's an easy fix. Yeah. Prototyping. Cool. All right, I'm just looking at page 23 and 24 here. Go to page 25. So I think this is actually a good project because it shows that you built something. I would re-photograph this Definitely. if you wanted to put it in your portfolio because right now it just lacks visual impact, sort of similar to Mez Club, but I would say more so. Mm -hmm. um, like It's a really good project because it shows that you know how to build things. And if you're looking for a soft goods job, the fact that you actually built something helps a lot. It's Definitely. just that you know on page 25... I don't know, it just lacks visual impact. And like, there's some issues with the photography. There's like, a, if you look at the gate, there's like this weird brass thing behind you, but it looks like it's sort of blending with your hair. So you mm. look a, a bit bird-like <laughs> <laughs> because of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so these are like small things, but once again, they do register subconsciously. Yes. Yeah, these are. this is good though. All right, this is probably one of your best projects and it's at the end. So one thing to remember is that by this point, the hiring manager may have already lost interest. So put mm. your best work first. Okay. Customize what you carry. This, this should should not be AI drawings, it should be renderings. Okay. Like super badass renderings when we look at page 27. And then page 28, these are great shots. So show me this, like nobody's gonna read this stuff on the left if we are, we're on page 29. So show me an actual, th even if you have to stage it, show me something happening with the build crew, like what their challenge is. Sure. They Like show me with an image. Just like remember what I said with the iPhone? Mm -hmm. It's it's a pain. It's really hard by the yeah. way, I know. Yeah. <laughs> because number one, you have to figure out how to express it and then you have to figure out the logistics of actually shooting it. It's mm -hmm. really, really difficult, believe yeah. me for page 30, all right, we're looking at like who it's for and the tools that they carry. Yep. It might be good to show like what these tools are and how they fit into your multi-tool. So you right. can have like an image of all of the tools that they have on page 30 mm -hmm. and then how they fit with your multi-tool. Or is this just how all of the tools in general and then you also have the multi-tool? So these are these are actually like a, this is like a typical everyday carry for a theater technician, like average theater technician. Okay. At least in high school, a lot of us carried these these tools. One of the things that gets lost the most, of course, are like Sharpies and pens and multi-tools are, are like an integral part of it, as is like a crescent wrench and a pair of gloves, glasses, like safety glasses and a flashlight. Okay. So, and that's just, you know, that's just basic tools, not even accounting for a wallet or cell phone. Okay, I think this is a good page. Um, the way that you've sort of laid everything out feels nice, but it just needs a little bit of help graphically. And I'll show you yeah. what I mean by that in the next pay in the next uh, presentation that cool. we go through. Once again, like the illustrator files, like it's cool. It just lacks visual impact. So just yeah. show me, show me each of the benefits with your actual product in okay. a rendering preferably okay. or, or a photograph depending. Conceptualization, cool. Detail design, also cool. Refinement, also cool. All right, so model making design evolution. Make this bigger. Okay. The, like the design evolution and the model making page, make these images bigger because they're really cool and they deserve more attention in my opinion. Absolutely. So page 35 and 36. Now, if we go to page 37, we sort of see the final payoff, the beauty shot. This is really, really well done dramatic lighting. However, I think that the the textures and materials could use just a little tiny bit of love. Mm -hmm. um, I sent you a, a video that by X, S. Ben Oxholm where he goes over binoculars and he actually yeah. talks about metal specifically. Awesome. Um, so look at that because the lighting is good, but the metal needs a little bit of love. Wait, this isn't a photograph, is it? No, that's, okay. that's a rendering. Good. These are renderings. Yeah. Are these renderings? Yes. <laughs> these are renderings. These look real. What did you do different with this one? Um, I uh, well, I actually use um, a bunch of area lights to uh, just really make the material sing, and um, definitely made use of the Keyshot Material Library and dialed in. It took a while to dial things in, but I spent a really long time learning Keyshot to make this project the best because this was her thesis. Right. So that was it. Was it was a real pain to make that happen, but. Um, 
but it, the payoff was great for the yeah. presentation and the end for thesis. So like page 38, like I don't know that you need to put all of these, like these almost could be on their own page, mm -hmm. each of them or some of them at least. Like yeah. I feel like you tend to put a lot of stuff on one page, whereas a lot of this stuff can sort of stand on its own. Like you don't need all that stuff in there. Uniquely yours. So show me some of the different configurations that you can use. I know you have Absolutely. it here. Yeah, yeah. But like maybe you could just lay out all of them sort of nulled like okay. uh, like laid out flat, sort of like you did with the tools that uh, theater tech would wear. Okay. Um, I think it's a cool project. One thing, another really big opportunity with this would be to make this more distinctive. So what do I mean by that specifically? This look, this is very much in line with what multi-tools look like now, right? Mm -hmm. And it looks really cool. It's very well executed. One thing to sort of uh, show your, and, and, like show off your skill set might be to do something that's like wildly different. Now, yeah. this is your thesis, so maybe don't redesign the whole thing <laughs> over again, uh, unless you want to. But maybe it could be like one or two new tools that you make that are very, very visually distinctive that still sort yeah. of fit in with this aesthetic. That would be a really cool opportunity. Absolutely, yeah. One, one thing I wanted to play with that I just didn't have time for the sake of finishing things uh, within my timeline for thesis was uh, textures on the handle scales and um, you know playing with different materials finishes um, but uh, there's definitely like a lot of opportunity for me to showcase the different configurations and I wanted to do that it was just a matter of you know fitting to the timeline that I had. I understand. Yeah. Well overall it's a solid body of work it just needs cool. some refinement in terms of presenting it. Got it. Um, so in the next episode, we're going to look at an example of a portfolio that's really, really good. It got this person a job immediately out of school. For now, here is the summary of this video. You wanna go for high impact visuals. The unfair and harsh reality is that hiring managers prioritize portfolios with flashy renderings and great sketches. Now, to be clear, you need to have a robust problem solving process to back up your design decisions. The beautiful renderings will sort of get your foot in the door. It'll get the hiring manager's attention initially. But if your projects don't show good design fundamentals and good thinking and solid problem solving skills, you'll get thrown in the no pile. Think of each page in your portfolio like a billboard ad almost. You want a descriptive image that demonstrates something, whether that's how your product is used or what the problem is. And then you need a quick, punchy caption or phrase, like a really quick headline. Show me what the product does with images. Don't tell me with text. Nobody wants to read. You can actually bypass this entire portfolio review process if you know the hiring manager. And that's going to be a later video in the series. We'll talk about that more. Anyway, thanks guys for checking out the video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe.